Okay, in this video of the skull, I want to concentrate specifically on the foramina and the things that pass through them. Okay, first of all, we'll start off with one that nothing passes through except air. That's the nasal aperture. And as that air passes on through, it's going to come through here, which is the coine. So that will go from the nasal cavity into the nasal pharynx. Okay. Now also on the caudal aspect of that nasal cavity, we see in here the cribriform plate. Okay. So basically all these little foramina here, what's passing through them is going to be the olfactory nerve. So cranial nerve 1 is going to pass through that in multiple little small nerves. Okay. We come over onto this side here. And we see this foramen here. This is the optic canal. And so sensory from the eye for sight is going to be passing through that. Now our next foramen here is the orbital fissure. Now it's got several things passing through it. It's going to have the oculomotor nerve, which is cranial nerve 3. And that is going to bring as the name implies, motor to the eye structure. So basically our dorsal, medial, and ventral rectus muscles, as well as our ventral oblique muscle. And it's also going to bring parasympathetic to the ciliaris muscle within the eye, which is for accommodation, as well as the constrictor pupillae muscle. Okay. Also coming through this foramen is going to be the trochlear nerve. Now the trochlear nerve, trochlea means pulley, is going to innervate the dorsal oblique muscle, which is going to come up here, pass through a little trochlea, and then attach to the dorsal surface of the eye. So that's going to cause medial rotation of the eye. Okay, so that's the trochlear nerve, cranial nerve 4. Then we're going to get the ophthalmic branch of cranial nerve 5, which is the trigeminal nerve, which is going to do sensory to the periorbita, sensory to the eye as far as like touch and pain, and then also it's going to get the medial aspect of the eyelid. Okay. And then finally coming through this foramen is going to be cranial nerve 6, which is the abducens nerve. And the abducens nerve is going to innervate the lateral rectus muscles as well as the retractor bulbi. And if you think about those lateral rectus muscles both contracting at the same time, then the vision is going to go outward from the midline. And so we're going to be abducting the vision. So abducens nerve fits well. Not that an animal's eyes would do that. Okay, so that's one, two, three. Our third little foramen here is the rostral alar foramen. And if we have a rostral, we must have a caudal alar foramen. And so if we pass this pipe cleaner through that canal, okay, this is just as the maxillary artery is going to pass into the caudal and out through the rostral alar foramen. Okay. Now if we come around and we look in here, we can see right here's another foramen that's going into that alar canal. That is a round foramen. So the maxillary nerve then, which is part of the trigeminal nerve, is going to pass through there and out through here. Okay, so that maxillary nerve then is going to continue this way and it's going to give off a couple little branches. One branch is going to go into this more dorsal foramen, which is this phenopalatine foramen and that's going to be the caudal nasal nerve. Okay, it's going to course with this phenopalatine artery and vein into the caudal nasal area. This more ventral foramen is the caudal palatine. Through it, the major palatine artery, vein, and nerve are going to pass through. That major palatine artery is going to send branches then through the major palatine 
foramen as well as some of these minor palatine foramina. Okay? So the maxillary nerve, just like the ophthalmic, is going to be sensory. So it's going to be sensory from the face. The major part of that nerve is then going to pass into the maxillary foramen, into the infraorbital canal, and come through the infraorbital foramen. Okay, it's going to give off innervation to all these teeth in the upper arcade, as well as this infraorbital nerve as it passes through here is going to bring sensory to the muzzle. So now just caudal to our caudal alar foramen is this nice oval foramen here, which is going to be the oval foramen. Okay, through that is going to be the mandibular nerve. That's also part of cranial nerve 5, the trigeminal nerve. It's going to come out and it's going to give off some branches to the muscles of mastication. So it's motor to the muscles of mastication. Then it's going to pass into this mandibular foramen here and course through the mandible giving innervation to these teeth. Okay, Some of those nerve fibers are going to come out through these mental foramen. Okay, the way I remember these are mental foramen. If you think about the thinker who's very mental, he's got his chin on his fist like this. Okay, so the mental foramina are here at the chin. So they're going to bring sensory from the lower lip. Okay, in my life I had a break in my mandible and they had to do surgery a couple times because it wasn't setting real well and it damaged that nerve. So I have no sensory now to that lower lip, okay? So back here, we've got a, there's our oval foramen again, and then up here, we've got a couple little foramina. We've got this more medial one is gonna be the foramen lacerum. This is funny, we've got a little part of the internal carotid artery that comes out and goes back in. I don't know why. Okay, right lateral to that is another little foramen, and you see there's this little bony protuberance here coming out. This is the musculotubal canal. This is part of the auditory tube. Okay, speaking of auditory, here we have the external acoustic meatus, and that's the terminal portion of the external ear canal. And just inside that is going to be the tympanic membrane. Within our tympanic bulla, we're going to find our middle ear. Okay. Now if we come on and we look inside here, we see this bony structure here. This kind of looks like a lava rock. That is the petrous portion of the temporal bone. Petrous meaning rock. Okay. We're going to have a little foramen right here, which is the internal acoustic meatus through which the vestibular cochlear nerve passes. Okay, that's going to bring sensory for hearing as well as sensory for balance to the brain. So that's cranial nerve 8, the vestibular cochlear. Okay. Okay, so here, these are our hyoid bones. This is the stylohyoid. The stylohyoid attaches here. Here's the mastoid process. So between the stylohyoid and the mastoid process is the stylomastoid foramen. Okay, this is where cranial nerve 7 passes. Cranial nerve 7 is going to bring motor to the superficial muscles of the head. It also brings sensory from the rostral two-thirds of the tongue for taste. Okay. So that's the facial nerve, cranial nerve 7. We can see here another fissure that because it's between the tympanic bone and the occipital bone, it's the tympano-occipital fissure. The pipe cleaner through it here. We can see it come out through. So it's coming out through the jugular foramen right here. Okay, so that's the jugular foramen. And this is the tympano-occipital fissure. 
So what passes through that are three cranial nerves, cranial nerve 9, 10, and 11. 9 is the glossopharyngeal. It's going to bring sensory and motor to the pharyngeal region, as well as sensory for taste from the caudal third of the tongue. It's also bringing sensory from the carotid sinus for blood pressure. Okay, The vagus nerve that comes through here, cranial nerve 10, is going to bring also motor and sensory from the pharynx, also motor and sensory to the larynx. Okay, Remember, it also provides parasympathetic innervation to the viscera of the thoracic and abdominal cavities, as well as sensory from the viscera in those cavities. Okay. Lastly, cranial nerve 11 is our accessory nerve. It's going to provide motor innervation to muscles of the neck and shoulder, specifically the omotransversarius, the cleidocephalicus portion of the brachiocephalic, and the trapezius muscle. Okay. Finally, we've got a little foramen here. That's the hypoglossal foramen through which the hypoglossal nerve, cranial nerve 12, passes through. And hypoglossal, the way I think of it is generally you think of the tongue, you think of the surface, that's taste. Below that is where the muscle is. And so the hypoglossal nerve is going to innervate the muscle of the tongue. Okay. Finally, now we have the foramen magnum. This is where the spinal cord comes out. Come back to this. We see here is the maxillary recess. In larger animals, it's the maxillary sinus. It communicates with the nasal cavity here. And also we have the frontal sinus, which also communicates to the nasal cavity. Okay. Also on this specimen, we have our, our hyoid bones. Okay, so we mentioned the stylohyoid. This one here comes back and attaches to the thyroid cartilage of the larynx. So this is the thyrohyoid bone. This is the basohyoid. It resides in the base of the tongue. So we have basohyoid, serratohyoid, epihyoid, and stylohyoid. And so remember, other than the thyrohyoid, these guys are in alphabetical order. So basohyoid, serratohyoid with a C, epihyoid, and stylohyoid. Okay? I think that's all I got.